looking at you, kids. You had me too. I wish I knew how to quit you. Bob. Mm, and you're speaking so weak. Bob. There's no place like home. I'm going to make an offer down with you. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to part two of our chat with Daniel Montgomery of Gold Derby. In today's episode, we break down the supporting contenders of 2021. This was recorded prior to the Golden Globe and Critics' Choice nominations, so you can see how we did in comparison to who we specifically talked about. Enjoy the show, and cue the music. Our big discussion today is going to be around the supporting category, supporting actor and supporting actress, respectively. Now that we've kind of seen everything, and with the critics group, you're starting to see some of the consensus start to form. And it's kind of varied and really cool because there hasn't been a particular front runner in either category for a while. There's no, like, quote unquote, overdue narrative. I feel like Richard Jenkins, people for a little bit of time were like, oh, let's get him a nomination. But I feel like he's really fallen recently because the humans just kind of came and went, sadly. Um, and then there's no one in particular for supporting actress where it's like, there's no ingenue Ellis isn't at the top. Kirsten Dunst isn't at the top. Ina DeBose is currently having a lot of, uh, push behind her, but there's nothing that's like the front runner. There's no one that's like the quintessential front runner. Let's give them all the awards. And that's really fun and exciting because we don't really have that often. So I want to devote some time in discussing, just the lay of the land as we get into critics tomorrow, as we get into the Golden Globes as well, and ultimately SAG and BAFTA and the Oscars along the way. I want us to kind of do a little discussion about the supporting categories because they're very rich this year. They're rich with some great supporting players, and I want to really get into that. Um, we're going to start off with supporting actor because um, that's the messiest. <laughs> um, in a good way. In a good way. It's messy in a very, very good way. Um, uh, Daniel, I know you have the gold derby up right now and it fluctuates. I feel like, man, I feel like that fluctuates almost every day. Not literally, but whenever you guys update it, there's always some sort of fluctuation because there's no set five, but I want to talk about two in particular that always seem to, uh, uh, come up. And that is the Belfast boys. If they has been affectionately known as across the uh, film Twitter sphere, the Belfast boys, Jamie Dornan and, um, oh Lord, uh, Karen Sierra Hines. Kieran, Kieran Hines, Hines, thank you. I, I, You know what? I practiced this beforehand, and I still failed in trying to pronounce his name. So uh, Kieran Hines is an overdue actor, uh, absolutely. I think he won uh, NBR, um, and Jamie Doran has been kind of writing that, those coattails as well, too, for the past little bit. We've been getting some uh, double-dip nominees recently. I think the past couple of years, we've had some double-dip nominees with The Irishman, with... Um, uh, there was one also recently, this past year. What was it that got two nominations? Uh, but it's been ha regardless. I'll look. I'll look. I'll look at that in a second. You guys can go ahead and talk while I do some of the investigative journalism over here. But uh, Daniel, that has happened increasingly. The Belfast Boys, both of them. What are your odds when it comes to that? Or in this case, what does Gold Derby have and you? Because I know they're probably separate entities. I don't want to put conflate you two as the same person. Um, well, we've got uh, the, the our odds say Kieran Hines is in second place in the race, uh, and Jamie Dornan is knocking on the door. He's sixth in our odds. Um, I personally think they're both getting in at the moment. Again, these these races are so like I'm going to be so disappointed if like all of the major awards groups like Critics Choice and SAG and you know they end up like narrowing it down to like the same people and it's just like oh, okay this race is done because there are just so oh, many yeah. people in the in these races uh that could that could get in at different awards um but i think uh you know kieran hines it's a you know he has like that narrative you know that you know every once in a while you get the character actor done good kind of uh mention where an actor who has been in so many things uh, but hasn't really gotten that major awards recognition, uh, and and then suddenly their moment comes, like J.K. Simmons with Whiplash. Yes. Um, that could be him this year, although it's not a showy role. It's a it's a it's a very understated role. He uh, has a big impact on the film, but his screen time, like he's not, he doesn't have, you know, for instance, as much focus, uh, nearly as much as Jamie Dornan does have in the film. Uh, so. It, it, it'll be interesting, but he also has that kind of character actor narrative that really often helps in supporting actor. Uh, 
but yeah, but given Jamie Dornan's the size of his role and the likelihood that the film is a best picture front runner, mm-hmm. you know, a, a, almost certainly a nominee, if not the winner. Uh, I think that puts him ahead of some of the other actors in this race just to get that nomination. And I wanted to clarify, there was someone last year, and that was Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield for Judas and the yes. Black Messiah. Oh, I forgot that because it was so wild. Ran, it was it was a really fun way to wake up and be like, well, this is different. Yeah, um, but it, it, really it cool. wasn't like they didn't both deserve it. Not that. Oh, yeah. Because only one. Oh, no, the, we all yeah. know. We all know one's going to win. But those both, both – because I, th- I think the other couldn't be as good as they were without the other one kind of in a, in a way like a, a yin and yang type of situation as far as that goes. And sometimes that could go wrong, and in that case it went right. Yeah, and the wild thing about it was that like we, we often see these sort of borderline lead performances going supporting you know, strategically. Uh, it was – absolutely bonkers to see both lead performances in this movie nominated as like there was like you could argue that one is lead and one is supporting i suppose uh but the idea that they're both supporting was kind of just nonsense (laughs) even Uh, though they were both deserving performances to be oscar nominated performances, them being in that category together was just weird so before I ask, say, ask your thoughts on the Belfast Boys, Dan, um, I just want to make a quick comment and that, uh, okay, we look at last year, Judas and the Black Messiah had two supporting actors. The year before that, we also had, um, I'll make sure I have this correct. Um, the year before that, we had The Irishman for Al Pacino, Joe Pesci. They both made it in. The year before that, we had Best Supporting Actress. You had um, Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz for The Favorite. Uh, the year before that... You had three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, Sam Rockwell and Woody Harrelson. So this is kind of mm. I did. I'm making a discovery right now. Uh, honestly, oh, I didn't I realize, realize this. It. Well, our oh. boys over at Gold Derby, which we have one of them right here in front of us. These guys love trends. They love to point out trends. And when trends start happening, they they will bring up these trends on on their discussions because now this is a trend that's a reoccurring trend and Kieran Hines and, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jamie Dornan. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can kind of see these guys in there. Look, and my, obviously you don't want to hear my, my, you know, what, what I have on my, I got my list right here in front of me. What I got. We will get into that. We will. But those but guys, they, they, they both, Kieran Hines is really good. And, and 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 Jamie Dornan is really good in a different way than Karen Hines, but they're both good in that movie. That it's like I would say one of them is a lead. I would say Dornan's more of a lead, even though the kid is the lead. You know, Jude Hill. So I don't know. I guess I guess they're supporting if you if you say so. Uh, I would say if they're pushing Jude Hill to be the supporting, I'll I'll let that slide because he is clearly. So yes, excuse me. Yes, he is clearly the lead. Uh, no, but I, I'm going back. I can't find. I'm still trying to go back and try to find where there's been a, a double dip. Um, the last double, the next double dip uh, is back in um, uh, the 84th, which was the film honoring the films of 2011 for the help where you had both um, Octavia Spencer and Jessica Chastain. Uh, but we have not, we really haven't had anything like that. And so till recently, so now I've convinced myself to have them both in based upon my own statistics um, or not my own, but just you discovering these statistics. You to put them both in, uh, Manny. I mean, it's going to be interesting to say the least because we could have a double dip also in supporting actress, which we'll get to a bit later as well. Um, but no, the Belfast boys are someone in particular that I think that we need to look out for. Um, but also that those, those... I, I, real quick, not to interrupt. Yeah, you, go man. ahead. Real quick, how about the power of the dog boys? Yes, I was and Cody Smith McPhee. You, I was literally about to mention them next. So, uh, the power of the dog boys. Um, <laughs> right now, Cody Smith McPhee doesn't have a ring to it as the Belfast boys, so we'll just call them uh, uh, Smith McPhee and the, Clemens, those but... those dog boys. Sure are powerful. <laughs> those dog boys. <laughs> that was clever. Bravo! A little 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 hand clap applause. 
Um, the, the dog boys. All right, Smith Mc, Cody Smith McPhee is currently leading with three wins from different critic groups, and I think there's a consensus from a critical reception outside of Troy Kotzer, who's also getting a lot of love recently. I feel like too. Um, Cody Smith McPhee is getting a lot of love, and Plemons has gotten some nominations, but no wins just yet for some of the critics. So we see them kind of as coming up from uh, behind. So uh, Daniel, tell me about. The, the dog the dog boys Plemons and cody smith mcphee uh do you think that these both have a chance or are we probably going to get one in comparison to the belfast boys uh i think they both have a chance uh i think there's less likely to be a double here than with the with the belfast boys uh you know once power of the dog started screening and reactions started coming out it really started shifting to cody smith mcphee just you know, how much weight his uh, story arc has on the overall narrative. Um, and so, you know, Jesse Plemons, I think, you know, depending on how strong the film is, he could get in too. Like he, he could sort of get that, you know, piggyback nomination, uh, but his role is less prominent. He has less screen time. Uh, so that probably hurts him a little bit. Uh, but he's built up a, a really great reputation in the industry, uh, you know, just working with amazing filmmakers and and being an acclaimed award nominated uh, films. So, you know, they both could get in. But right now, I think it's just going to be Cody. Well, the thing is, too, is like you don't want to, like, have one category with four people from two films. And, 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 and they love to spread the love around. And that would be kind of a little bit too anticlimactic if you put, like, the same thing, we'll say, uh, Ruth Nega and um, Tessa Thompson in there for Best Supporting Actress, unless one's lead and one's supporting. I mean, yeah, Tess, Tessa's is lead okay. in passing okay. and, and Ruth is All right, supporting. Well then. All right, then that, there goes that point that I was trying to make. <laughs> but, uh, unless they pull, unless the Academy pulls a... Uh, uh, a Judas Minor. and the Black Messiah, and decides mm-hmm. that they're both the leading ladies of that movie are both somehow supporting. <laughs> yeah, which you know, you know, that'd be very incorrect. <laughs> yeah, it, it's happened before, but uh, so we, you just don't know. I think there's, I, I think there's enough people in supporting to get some other people in there, and and that's where I'm kind of with you, Daniel. Where I don't think we're gonna get two two nominated movies and in, in, in best uh, supporting actor. I, Cause I just think there's too many other people when they're like Ben Affleck in the tender bar, Richard Jenkins in the humans, you know, um, and some other people, let me uh, real quick. I got my thing right here. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's just too many. There's just too mm-hmm. many. Uh, Troy Kotzer and Robin De Jesus, you know, in uh, tick, tick, boom, Troy Kotzer and Coda. So there's, you're not going to get that twice. If you get it once, we'll be lucky. Yeah, because you got six. Because that's three nominees. So that means you only have room for two more. Go ahead. What I was going to say is, I, I I hope they're not. I don't want to say the term lazy because I don't want to neglect the fact of like, oh, to to take away the honor of Jesse Plemons getting an Oscar. That'd be really cool. I'd be really happy if an Oscar nomination for Jesse Plemons. But I don't think they're going to be like, let's double dip for both of these, and then again for the supporting actress again. Possibly, I don't see that happening for all three. It's like it's like a what if scenario. I don't see that transpiring though. Um, but you had just mentioned Troy Kotzer, who's seen his star rise really recently as the critics really started to like hone in on him. Besides Cody Smith McPhee, he's one that I've also seen gotten a lot of love. Um, and I kind of had the suspicion for the past little bit that Coda's star was going to rise again, especially after we've gotten some of the critical love. And Troy Kotzer has kind of come with it, even more so than his supporting actress co-star. Daniel, have you noticed that uh, in particular? I have, and I kind of saw it coming when I saw Coda. Um, I, you know, cause Marley Matlin has, you know, greater name recognition, you know, she's an Oscar winner. She's been in the industry for, for years and not as many people, uh, were familiar with Troy Kotzer. I wasn't, uh, very familiar with Troy Kotzer. It's not very often that you see deaf actors in film, um, other than Marley Matlin. Uh, so mm-hmm. when I saw this film, I was looking at, you know, just how much buzz a Marley Matlin got. Uh, and deservedly, she's quite good in the film. I, I think she's fantastic. Um, but I came away from the movie thinking people are going to come to this movie uh, 
uh, and and you know maybe thinking Marley Matlin, maybe thinking oh this movie's going to be good, or maybe thinking the screenplay is going to be good, uh, and they're going to come away with Troy Kotzer. He's he's going to be that kind of actor who gets a nomination because they're voting, they're watching the movie for something, and then he takes them by surprise, uh, which very much felt like a, a John Hawks and Winter's Bone kind of thing. They're watching it for Jennifer Lawrence, and then he becomes such a big supporting actor, contender. Uh, Paul Racy last year for Sound of Metal, people were watching that for Riz Ahmed and for the sound design and, and all that. And, you know, Paul Racy just blew everyone away so much that he just got in everywhere and i feel like i felt like when i saw coda and some of the strongest most emotional scenes in coda i'm like troy kotzer it's gonna happen that's gonna happen with troy kotzer and we saw that at the gotham awards where he was nominated against marley matlin in the same category and the, the jury gave it to him yes. instead of her so i yeah so when i saw that i was like yeah i, I think i think this is gonna happen Oh, that's a that's a really excellent point too because I think I had predicted Marley Matlin based upon name recognition, but the Gotham's will Gotham, and they gave it to Troy Kotzer. So that's a, he was the one that I took. Um, I think besides Daniel Durant, I think he was someone that I definitely gravitated towards because I didn't know who he was. He was a fresh face because we know Marley Matlin from well, I knew her from The West Wing. That's when I first found out about her. But like she's been around for a while with her Oscar win prior. So Dan, for you, Troy Kotzer is he? Uh, and not to put a one-on-one comparison with Paul Racy, but Daniel's right. He's the first person that pops in mind because that happened last year when he made it in. I was super excited. Do you see that happening again this year? Well. Manning, what have I been saying for weeks now? And I don't know. You said a lot of things, man. Broken record. The Academy Awards and a lot of these award shows love the person that comes out of nowhere that nobody has ever heard of. Usually it's two people from various categories and various – and they're like the darlings of the awards season. And Troy Kotzer is one of the darlings of the awards season this year. And I just knew it was going to happen. And and now we're just going to find another one or two. Because it happens every year. They just get the, I'm the captain now. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, Abdi, yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, the girl, the girl, Gabbara Sudebe. Uh, 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 the girl from Beasts of a Southern Wild, the little girl. Uh, every Every year, there's two or three people that come out of nowhere. Paul Racy last year. This year, Troy Kotzer is going to be the one. Ariana DeBose, who who knew who the heck she was before West Side Story, you know? I didn't know who A she was. A lot of theater people knew who she was, okay. but not as many yes. film people. I was about you know? to say, <laughs> wasn't she in the prom? She was, she was in the prom, yes. Wow, I forgot about that. It's, oh, wow, yeah, that was a thing. So, um, I mean, these people, they love to get get that Hollywood story of, oh, you, you were bagging groceries last year, but now you're nominated for an Academy Award this year. Or, you know, not to use Kurt Warner for, uh, but he's got a movie coming out called American Underdog. Oh, yeah. And that's what he did. He was a, he bagged groceries and then, he got into the uh, arena football and then the next thing, the NFL. But that's just kind of me using my sports knowledge. But, uh, yeah, remember Barkab Abdi was a, was a, a limo driver, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> he was, uh, which brings me to an idea of, like, this is what the critics bring forth and they kind of – elevate some performances that may not otherwise have been seen by some academy members because we all know we get those every year those like secret ballots where we don't know who the people are and they'll say oh i haven't got a chance to watch this or i didn't see that or something blah blah blah. but these help elevate i feel like and troy kotzer is one of those people from the that the critics are currently elevating there are some performances that will not need elevating because they most likely have already seen it some of the oscar voters and one of those in particular I feel like anyway, that doesn't have to be elevated by critics, but could get in because we saw last year with SAG and Golden Globes, he didn't need anything else. He just got that. That's Jared Leto in House of Gucci. Jared Leto in House of Gucci has definitely, I see Dan shaking his head, and I'll let, I'll let you talk in a minute, Dan, but Jared Leto has gotten a lot of talk for House of Gucci, but it's the type of performance that the little things is any indication that could totally get a nomination for an Oscar but also maybe a Razzie in the same year, a la Glenn Close uh, last year. 
So, um, Dan, I know you have a couple of thoughts about uh, Jared Leto um, possibly getting in, but he is a contender nonetheless. Despite of, despite no matter what of us, no matter no matter what any of us think, he's a contender. Yeah, I uh, he he's just an absolute joke in this movie, and he 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 he, he, he I mean, remember what my comparison was? This is like the comedic version of The Godfather, and he's like the like the version of Fredo. He's like this version of Fredo, but Fredo, John Cazale is, you want to talk about a hundred times, but a hundred times better than Jared Leto is in House of Gucci. I mean, it. this movie, what the heck is Jared Leto doing? This isn't a performance. This is some, like he probably took some drugs and started repeating his lines in some weird accent or something <laughs> for all I know. I, no, no, please don't let this become a thing. This does not need to become a thing. I just, uh, no, it's just not my cup of tea. I didn't, wasn't liking him at all in this. I like like Al Pacino. I like Jeremy Irons. I like Adam Driver. I like Lady Gaga. I like all of them better than, way better than him in this movie. I agree. I do like them better. But he gives the showiest performance out of maybe next to Lady Gaga. And you know the Oscars sometimes love showy. So, uh, Daniel, Jared Leto and House of Gucci, what do we got? What do we think? Um, it's going to be tricky. Uh, it's, you know, it feels like very much that uh, sort of hillbilly elegy kind of situation where, you know, are, you know, in this case, it's going to be like, are they are they laughing with him or at him? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, uh, because this this role is going to be this performance is going to be very divisive. Um, if they, I feel like if they like House of Gucci enough, they'll possibly put him in. Um, but at the moment, I don't have it happening. Um, but I also remember the little things and how close that came to happening. Uh, although I, I actually think that was a better performance, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, actually yeah I agree it, with that. it's, you know, but yeah, it's, it, it is the kind of showy performance that's going to get the attention. Uh, you know, there's, you're not going to have, you're not going to be you know, have people, you know, to convince them. It's like, oh, see this before you vote. Like, they're going to see House of Gucci before they vote. Um, and he's going to stand out no matter what, for better or for worse. Uh, I mean, he just needs to stand out for the better with enough people to crack the top five. So it's it's possible. Uh, but right now, I'm not confident that will happen. I guess the thing that scares me the most is because the little things almost happen and that I'm over here wondering – they really like Jared Leto if he made it into SAG. Uh, so, and it's very showy. It's a, it's a very showy performance. Yes. He's less of a caricature in um, uh, the little things, which I don't think he's a caricature. It's just a very different performance, but yeah, in house of Gucci, that's a caricature in my opinion. And um, we'll see how that uh, shapes up. Uh, good luck to you, Jared Leto and getting your second Oscar nomination. Um, but yeah, no, that's one of the big ones. That I don't think needs a lot of critical, critical love. Uh, because I, you know, we're going to, I'm going to mention a couple more and then I want you guys to tell me uh, what your current five is at the moment. The one I want to mention as well too, uh, is, um, um, it's, a uh, you'd mentioned also Dan, it's, uh, Robin DeJesus said for tick, tick, boom. Uh, that was one that kind of came out of nowhere and recently got a nomination also for the Hollywood Critics Association. Uh, it was a great lineup for supporting actor for the Hollywood Critics Association, if I might add really solid lineup. But he made it in, and if people are seeing Tick, Tick, Boom, is there a possibility, Daniel, you think that could come along with us? Because he's really good in it. Um, I would love that to happen. I think he's fantastic in Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, and that'll be another sort of uh, similar to Troy Kotzer. Like, people will go into Tick, Tick, Boom for the Andrew Garfield performance and come out thinking, oh, but Robin Jesus is also fantastic in this film. Um, and that could, and especially if the film is building momentum towards a potential best picture nomination, um, like that could, you know, it could overperform in that way that it carries him along with it. Um, I would love to see him score some of these precursor nominations. That would be a great help. Um, you know, so, so I, I do think he's, he's in it, but I, I, I think he needs, he needs definitely more of a push. 
Yes, I can see him getting like a. I feel like SAG might really enjoy as a theater since he's a theater actor, and I think he's Tony nominated if I'm not mistaken. But SAG yeah, could sure. really go. SAG could totally totally go for him. Um, uh, critics could choice could totally go for him as well with the six that we have for a supporting actor. He could be the sixth person. Um, Dan, you had mentioned uh, uh, Robin uh, De Jesus. Tell me about your chances or you, your thoughts on his chances. Well, that's where you take away one of the dog boys, and you, you get these people like. I love how that's a thing. <laughs> like Robin De Jesus in there. First of all, look, we added all these people to the academy. We 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 diversified the academy so we can diversify the categories. Well, guess what? Boom, Robin De Jesus. He's staring you right in the face. Perfect choice to throw into best supporting actor. Not that he doesn't deserve it because he does deserve it to help diversify that category. Because if you're looking at this category, you're looking at a bunch of Caucasian white men in here. And he, this guy ticks two boxes. Now, Latino, and I think he's, um, I think he might be gay, but I'm not sure. Yes. So there you mm -hmm. go. He's ticking two boxes there. You get rid of one of the Caucasian white men out of that category because it's full of them so that's something you could think of and i th and i know with the diversity that they've been trying to work towards the academy that kind of would be a very good way to go with best supporting actor in my opinion and i think also he the performance in and of itself is the definition of a supporting performance in the fact that it really does support andrew garfield but he also has a great argument of himself and he's really good and i was listening to the interview uh, uh he's also really a great engaging presence so he could really work the award circuit and really do some really uh, great things i was listening to uh, the interview he had with uh, clayton davis of variety recently and uh, he is really really just a engaging personality and if he works that and starts getting some nominations i can see that happening could be a really cool supporting actor nomination in my mind um and one more one more i want to uh, mention before i ask y'all which ones you guys think it is but one of the ones i want to mention is uh someone who I think had some momentum, but is starting to lose it. And that is, uh, uh, at least in my mind, and that is um, uh, J Richard Jenkins in The Humans. I feel at once upon a time, he was really high up, but I haven't really seen much talk about The Humans. Again, that could change because critics haven't really been gravitating toward him at all. I don't think he's gotten any critical love yet, but it could also be something that the Academy goes for. Uh, Daniel, I'm pretty sure he's still in the top five, though, of Gold Derby, or has he fallen? Uh, yeah, he's still he's still holding on to to the top five uh, at okay. the moment. Okay, so what's your thoughts on Richard Jenkins um, um, maybe getting uh, being the sole representation of his film for a nomination? I think that's his biggest problem uh, is that you know he was higher up in our uh, odds when like this you know a lot of these films hadn't screened yet a lot of these other films um he's sort he's got that character actor factor uh this is a role that won a tony on broadway um and for reed bernie interestingly enough who you know could theoretically be nominated for mass <laughs> that'd be fun um so uh but yeah like as the season has progressed all of his top competition are in top best picture contenders um Power of the Dog, Belfast, uh, Licorice Pizza with Bradley Cooper, um, you know, Troy Kotzer for Coda. That's a, a very strong possibility for a Best Picture nomination. So, like, the fact that The Humans, it looks like it's not really getting much traction anywhere else. Um, it might make it hard for him to get in. Like, we, you know, he could be that kind of person like Timothy Chalamet in Beautiful Boy, who mm. gets nominated everywhere across the board but isn't getting and the fifth film isn't getting any other recognition and just the oscar nomination doesn't happen because not enough academy members probably watched it because they you know it wasn't really it, it wasn't really considered urgent to them like as a best picture contender uh so it, it, it might suffer from that but he also could be a lone representative like uh willem dafoe was for florida project who also seemed like a front runner early on and then kind of slid but held on for the nomination. And what about for you? Well, we know he's been nominated twice, Richard Jenkins has, and he hasn't won. And they kind of like giving somebody who's been on that kind of uh, 
that in, in the zeitgeist as far as we've had him nominated twice. He hasn't won. We haven't given him that award. That person like a Chris Cooper where we haven't given – and all of a sudden, finally, Chris Cooper wins. All of a sudden, uh, 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 what's his name? One for uh, – we, we just talked to him about him from Vice and uh, Three Billboards. Uh, Sam Rockwell wins. You know, some of these people that have been kind of really a great professional actor for a long time, and they've been kind of there, and then it's their turn – you know, and then you get you get Marshall Ali. <laughs> he gets two Oscars. Like, you know, he might even be nominated for a third one this year. The way things are going with Swan Song, um, but I I still have him at number one, Richard Jenkins, and because I want to see this happen, I want to see him get this third nomination and finally win an Oscar because I think he's really done a great job in his entire career. I mean, he's he's done so much really good work and he's also in nightmare alley as well and is you know it's weird i'll tell you he's got a more kind of it's a smaller role but it's really just in your face what he does in nightmare alley richard jenkins so who knows maybe they get rid of him in um the humans and put him in nightmare alley instead you never know i feel like they have to really like nightmare Ali, which we might there might be a supporting actress that might get in we'll talk about in a sec but uh no yeah i i just i i think that richard jenkins is something i just need to see um just needs to he need, he needs to be watch watch critics happen watch critics happen tomorrow watch golden globes happen and this conversation is obsolete but until then if he misses both of those I'm definitely gonna have him out. He's my yeah. I think I think he probably might be out unless SAG can rally behind someone like Richard Jenkins. Um, actually, I lied. There's actually two more people because Daniel, I think um, uh, you mentioned it. Um, uh, Reed, Bernie, and Jason Isaacs. The the Matt. Well, I'm not gonna call them the Mass Boys. That's just sound <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> um, but for the two great, which one of my actually that's my that's that is my favorite film of the year. It's Mass. Um. I feel like once upon a time, Jason as Isaacs had a shot from the two. And even with the great, awesome nomination from the Gotham's for Reed Bernie, I think these two aren't going to make it. And it really saddens me. I'm just kind of hoping that Ann Dowd maybe can pull through at this point, but I don't see that happening. Uh, what about for you, uh, Daniel? Uh, yeah, I'm not optimistic, which is sad because I also absolutely loved this movie. Oh. And I thought there was, I thought there was a chance all four could get in uh, bec- and oh, they all four the would deserve it. Uh, it, it, it's such a great set of performances. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that the film hasn't really picked up as much traction as I think it has deserved. Um, uh, and, and such a great year for like actors turned directors with Fran Franz and Rebecca Hall and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Uh, you know, it, it, like I, I want so much better for Mass than I feel like it's is is happening. Like it would have been great to see Mass on the AFI list. Uh, you know, but oh. no. So, uh, but I, I think it's still possible. It's still early enough. You know, there's still enough awards uh, that haven't been announced, uh, nominations and awards that haven't been announced. So, uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's no chance. Uh, and I'm, I'm really hoping they rally. But right now, it's not looking too good. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, uh, Dan. I have, I had, I don't have mass anywhere sadly in my predictions because i'm scared and i'll be surprised if it makes it in i'll be a happy surprise I, i'll i want to be proven wrong should i be wait to be proven wrong dan or am i doing the right thing you're doing the right thing i think uh mask has oh. um gone the way of you know where's we're in sunday so until mass today was mass day well it's you know <laughs> tomorrow will be monday so you'll be forgetting about mass day on sunday uh as a church reference, I don't know. If this, hey, but, well, it's not midnight mass. It's just regular mass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. And unfortunately, I mean, look, I just, not, I'm not going to get into a whole big thing about this, but I just don't yeah. think a movie with four people talking at a table translates to mass audiences, no pun intended. And it's obviously, we saw this movie and we loved it because we love the dialogue. We love the tension so between the characters and the subject matter that they're dealing with. But the normal everyday movie going audience wants laughs. They want action set pieces. They want they want kind of just explosions and fireworks and all kinds of craziness. And 
mass just doesn't do anything for people. And that's the problem with mass. And, and, and us film fans and film aficionados, yeah, it's our cup of tea. We eat it up, but the normal people don't. And so that, I think that's why it didn't translate in a lot of these uh, categories and people aren't just blowing away. People didn't go see it. You know, people just, it didn't do good. Yeah, I, I think that's the issue. This just hasn't been seen as much as it should be. Um, but yeah, that's sad. Uh, so before we move on from supporting actor category, uh, uh, Dan or Daniel, uh, what are some of the uh, ones that I haven't talked about that uh, you guys think that we should look out for or we should be talking about? Well, look, real quick, I'm just going to say one person. And Please. maybe it's just because I'm such a big fan and I, and I want this to happen. And I just think it's when people see the movie, they're going to really gravitate towards this person in this role as, as a, a father figure and a kind of like a, in a way, a caregiver and, and a friend and, and it covers all those kinds of things. And it's an actor who's won an Academy Award before, has been nominated, got snubbed before. So it's kind of got a history with these award shows over the last 20 or so years, 30 years, whatever. And that's Ben Affleck in the tender bar. Uh, oh God. I loved him in this movie and I would die. I would absolutely die if they nominated him in, in supporting actor. Cause I think he deserves it. I think he really deserves it in this, in, in the tender bar uh, as a bartender slash uncle, I mean, he just, he, he does the, everything you would want from a best supporting actor in this role, in my opinion. And I just think people need to see the movie and then they, they'll realize what a, what a great job he does. So that's my one that I have, but we've mentioned all the others. Uh, Daniel, what about for you? What are the ones that I, I know there's one big one actually that I've realized now that I haven't talked about and kind of forgotten that he's, I think he's in the top five right now. Um, uh, but before I mention that, because he may be the one you want to mention. Which one do you want to talk about that we haven't mentioned yet? Um, there's one that I think we... Well, there are a couple. Um, I think J.K. Simmons has a shot from being the Ricardos. Uh, like, the film's reviews have been somewhat mixed, but Nicole Kidman, I think, still has a really strong chance at a Best Actress nomination. Um, and a lot of people have really responded strongly to J.K. Simmons in this role, so that could happen. Um, I also think, like... This this could go completely nowhere, or it could be like a surprise that ends up feeling uh, inevitable. Um, I could see Andrew Garfield in Eyes of Tammy Faye, and, and oh. you know, on 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 a couple of factors, like things things are, could like converge for him very well this season if he has enough momentum for Tick Tick Boom. That there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm behind that. That could boost his profile for Eyes of Tammy Faye and the fact that Jessica Chastain has such a strong profile for Best Actress in that film. Uh, that could also boost him for Tammy Faye. So I could like I could see things lining up for him so well that it becomes sort of like you know it's like oh yeah he's 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 also getting that piggyback nomination for Eyes of Tammy Faye. Uh, so I think I think we could see that happen, and you know, as the nominations come through in the next, you know, in the coming weeks. Wow, that. But that's just really... like a hunch. I'm not currently predicting it, but um, I I won't be surprised if it starts happening. Wow, that that's would be talk. wild. I mean, now, Searchlight's pushing Tammy Faye big time. So now maybe, maybe that. Oh, Daniel, that's right. They'll be looking for Tammy Faye, and then they see him. Like, holy crap, he's good in this. He is. He and, is and good even enough. if he hadn't, and even if he hadn't had like a, a you know a strong profile for a nomination for that film before, they might watch Tammy Faye and think, oh, he, I really liked him in Tick Tick Boom, and he's also really good in this in a completely different role, uh, and that could you know push him to uh, that extra nomination potentially. Wow, that's, that's actually. Wild. That's actually a really, really good point. Um, do you have, and actually you have him in addition to also getting nominated for Best Actor, so it's possible, well, obviously I know you don't have it right now, but do you see that happening as a double nom? Yeah, if, if he got in for, uh, I don't think he would get in for Tammy Faye without also having that Best Actor nom for Tick, Tick, Boom. Because I think the momentum from that is like, like the rising tide is going to lift all of his boats. Now, the one I wanted to mention as well, too, uh, that I I forgot to mention. It was on my list, and I just went right past it. Bradley Cooper and Licorice Pizza. Uh, the one thing that I heard um, was that his 
the one downside being that his his part is very small. Um, I have not seen Licorice Pizza yet, and Dan seems to have be nodding in agreement. But I, but he's still up there for best supporting actor on the Gold Derby odds. Um, Dan still disagrees with that assessment. Are you are you disagreeing with Gold Derby, Dan? Kick him out of there! <laughs> wow! If you're gonna put Bradley Cooper in any of these categories, put him in best actor. He's great in Nightmare Alley. He's great in Nightmare Alley. He's the fifth guy in in the best actor race, not best supporting. Get him out of there! It, that movie is phenomenal. I love Liquor's Pizza. That is just the most wild, out of crazy performance. He's in like t- eight minutes, ten minutes of this. Get him! No, get people stop pushing him for that get stop doing that well daniel do you disagree um uh i i don't know uh you know earlier this season like i just talked about potential double nominations for andrew garfield earlier this season it looked like that might happen for bradley cooper especially because he has that overdue narrative uh so i think a lot of that enthusiasm like because i he was my like sight unseen prediction to win best supporting actor way back at the start of the season uh just you know from mm-hmm. his narrative and from it's a paul thomas anderson movie you know uh you know since it's a smaller uh, part uh you know that that hurts his chances and so i think uh like that's you know and he has been sliding a little bit in the odds but uh i do still think it's possible although i would almost feel bad if he gets another nomination that he doesn't win <laughs> He has been nominated eight times. <laughs> it was almost like Glenn Close last year. I was thinking, don't you're not going to give her the Oscar for Hillbilly Elegy, so don't even no. nominate her. That's just so, like you, wait until you're going to give it to her. You know, like you wait know, until you're going to give it to her. We thought she's going to get it the year before, Daniel. I mean, there's nobody in their yeah. right mind could have predicted she wasn't going to win the year before. Even though Olivia Coleman was great, she was great. I cannot deny. I was Olivia about Coleman. to say. She was she great. Was great. I, that's where Olivia Coleman really was great. Not the lost daughter. Don't get me started on that. I won't get you started on that. Uh, but no, one that I wanted to mention too was the one that I, I had for a bit and was kind of flirting with the idea was John Berenthal um, for um, uh, uh, King Richard, which is a really great uh, performance, really against type for him, as I mentioned in a prior podcast. Uh, he plays this really, really, really just tough guy and um, uh, like a very much, for lack of a better term, Punisher archetype because that's kind of like what he usually does and not saying it's bad but this one he kind of plays almost a goofy individual and i love him in what he does in this uh i don't unless they love king richard um and that has a shot at getting something else he could make his way in i don't know but Massive. that'd be really cool he um, was beautiful uh, he was so funny i because he was he, funny because what's his name was just kind of pulling his strings wasn't he uh yes great reactions richard, Richard was kind of pulling his strings and he, his reaction to some of this stuff was so funny. And you just recently saw Kim Richard. So you, you, you probably have a, a, a interesting opinion on this too, right, Daniel? Uh, yeah. So uh, John Bernthal could uh, be evidence that King Richard is a potential best picture winner, uh, you know, cause it will be indicative of just how much they love the film as a whole. Uh, cause you know, this isn't the kind of role that would normally get in since it's, you know, it's, it's, doesn't have its own like kind of meaty character arc and it's a it's a lighter hearted role in in this film um and it would be one of the lighter roles in the category uh so uh very possible because king richard is probably going to do very well um and if john bernthal is nominated king richard is probably going to do extraordinarily well no agree with how many weeks ago did we talk about this manning just very a little bit ago a couple of weeks Two or three weeks ago, we talked about the same thing, Daniel. Like, if John Berthold gets in the Best Supporting Actor, Anjan, Anjanu Ellis gets in the Best Supporting, supporting actress, actress, this actor. film is going to do really well. We, yes. we, were circling, we were circling the wagons around King Richard about three weeks ago. So we, we had this narrative going, and you're absolutely 100% correct. That would be the one. You, once you, if you saw that, you better start – checking those King Richard boxes on your balance because it's going to do good. Agreed. Um, and speaking of King Richard, that's going to be a great transition into supporting actress. Uh, supporting actress is a little less, um, what's the word? It's a little less, it's a little more solidified. No, it's a little, a little more solidified. I feel like, uh, 
well, contentious might be the right, right word. It might be actually, but it's a little more solidified in comparison to a, um, a supporting actor. And one of those that I feel like is is like a shoe in for a nomination. I can't really say that with a lot of the best supporting actors, but one of the shoe ins for actress I think is. Anjanou Ellis, who is currently tied right now with Kristen Dunst for uh, critics wins right now. And there's kind of like this back and forth, I feel like, for them at the moment. But Anjanou Ellis, I feel like, is a very safe bet. She almost almost steals the movie away from Will Smith, I feel like, in my opinion. But she is a great, solid, like, supporting force and, and kind of toes the line between lead, uh, I feel like. Um, but she is someone who really kind of just supports uh, 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 that entire film and kind of holds it up and makes it even better. And I think she'd be a fantastic addition. And I have her currently um, not winning, but I have her in my five right now. So Daniel uh, for Andrew Ellis, uh, does she, how good, how good are her chances right now? Um, I think she's a pretty likely nominee. Um, I don't know about the win yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kirsten Same. Dunst, uh, has the has the narrative of you know actress who's been working for almost her entire life in the industry has given acclaimed performances has never been nominated. Power of the Dog is a likely a almost certain Best Picture nominee and a possible Best Picture winner, uh, so that would be a, an acting award that they could give it um, because I think I think it's act I think she's probably the strongest possibility for an acting win for the film which i think has three strong chances for an acting win um so uh so yeah i i feel like uh uh Anjanou ellis doesn't quite have that narrative although she also has you know she's that character actress uh, like again talk about these actors who have been working for years in the industry um, she's kind of on a hot streak uh, coming off of two Emmy nominations for When They See Us a couple of years ago and Lovecraft Country this Ooh, year. Yeah. Like, I, she's yeah. been around for, she's been working for so long, but I feel like people are starting to really take notice of her and appreciate her work finally. So, uh, and it's a very familiar Oscar role. Like she, like she is the, the long suffering wife is like, we've seen that win this category very many times, you know, from Beatrice Strait to Jennifer Connelly to Viola Davis and Fences, um, you know, I, and that could be like even a problem potentially if 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 voters feel like they've seen like a role like this before, um, even though she is, you know, as good as you can ask anyone to be uh, at this role. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I think she's, I think she's in whether she wins. I don't know. I, I feel like there's a, a stronger narrative for a couple of other actors here. Yes, and I, I, yeah, right. The narrative for Kirsten Dunst is a lot, is a lot more strong. It's a lot more stronger. No, it's a lot stronger. There we go. English is a lot stronger than um, uh, uh, Anjanou Ellis at the moment. Not saying to discount the quality of her performance, but those two are definitely like I think very safe for a nomination at the very least with the critical praise that is transpiring because both other films are going to do very well at the Oscars. Dan, what about you? What do you think for Anjanou Ellis and as well as Kirsten Dunst? for uh, getting in for supporting actress as being some of the two solid front runners for nominations anyway. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're in the five, but I mean, if you look at the performances, Kirsten Dunst kind of gives this kind of interesting performance. It's kind of like this, like this is, uh, this woman. I mean, I guess it's, she's drunk half the time and she's kind of like half out of it. And she's like, like, Oh, here, take these, take these, logs or take these whatever indians come on come on back get, I, uh, but i vehemently disagree but we'll have that discussion when we have a view of her power of the dog but please go I knew Ellis that where she's given it to richard williams boom there's your oscar moment they love their oscar moment and i just knew Ellis, that when she starts giving it to Richard Williams about how I've been here for these girls and you're da, 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 this, that, and the other, that's what they love. They love those moments. And so she's definitely risen up the ranks and in, in, into the five. I mean, so it could be either one. It could be either one of them. But like we said, if King Richard starts doing really well, keep an eye out for it doing really well, you know, and, 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 and when it does good in nominations, it could do good in wins. And Power of the Dog is, these are two of the front runners. I mean, for best picture, really, if you really think about it. So you're going to get the two, two, 
two big female actors in there that are going to be part of that cast. So, yeah. And I know I, I and we'll again, we'll, I'll talk about Kristen does Kristen does later, but I think she's gives a fantastic performance. And so does Anjanu Ellis. They're both fantastic. And I see them definitely as the ones who are going to be able to make it. Uh, well, you're right, Daniel. Uh, she, Dunst has the uh, narrative outside of the role to be able to do it because the fact that she hasn't been nominated for an Oscar before to me is it's 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 weird to think about because I feel like she has, but she she hasn't. Emmys, yeah, like, those Emmys were. You just remember in these shows, you're like, oh, I know her, I know her, and th- yeah, it's because of the TV shows she was in, and now all of a sudden she's getting to be in a movie, and like, okay, now we're starting to see this. The lady's a great actress. Mm-hmm. And there's another combination duo that I want to talk about, and that is we have the uh, Ariana DeBose for West Side Story and Rita Moreno for. West Side Story, playing not Anita, but the new Doc character, Valentina. So, but we also have the Belfast Girls to another double dip. I just realized looking at my notes here that we could have, it's not going to happen. It's like, what, it's like a, probably like a 0.5% chance that all those happen at once in this weird, strange world. But also for uh, Dame Judy Dinch for Belfast and Katriana Balf for Belfast. For those two sets, what is the most likelihood of all those four getting nominated and the fact that we could have a mix and match combination for Daniel? What do you think? Um, I think it's probably not going to happen. Um, I, 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 I don't think both will happen. Uh, mm. I think at most one will. And I actually don't know which one would be more likely because they both kind of have a strong case to potentially be that one. Like the Oscars obviously love Judy Dench. Um, uh, though I think Katrina is the safer of the two for Belfast because she has a larger role. She has a couple of, as, as Dan was saying about Anjanou Ellis, she has a couple of those Oscar clip speech scenes that, you know, where she gets to be very emotional and the focus is entirely on her. Um, so, so that's going to be tricky. Uh, and the same, same thing with West Side Story, Ariana DeBose is the much likelier of the two. Um, although Rita Moreno does also have that narrative uh, of of winning the Oscar for the film, the uh, the original film, and then coming back in a different role, I don't think people were expecting it to be a substantial role. Uh, just mm-hmm. to be sort of be one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, it's sort of like a way to honor the original film, have Rita Moreno in a in a small part or something like that, and, and people saw the film and were like, oh no, she could get nominated for this one too. Um, she just turned 90, um, you know, you know, she's having such a a great moment too. like, it feels, it feels like she's coming back into the public consciousness, uh, with one day at a time, um, you know, for a few years, uh, and, and it would, it would be lovely to see. Um, but again, there's, there's so much crowding in this that I feel like it's going to be hard for these two movies to get two nominations, uh, each. Again, like a 0.5% chance of it even transpiring, but there is because there is talk and buzz, it could happen in that 0.5% chance. But I don't think we're living in that 0.5% chance world. Um, yeah. If anything, okay, that, then, for that to happen, you'd have to kick out either Kirsten Dunst or Anjanou Ellis for that yes. to happen. Yes, and that's a world I don't want to live in. Um, so, uh, out of those two, Daniel, what do you think is going if, if for the likelihood? Do you think that both Belfast women are going to make it, or do you perceive the boys and Moreno going to be able to make it? Um, I think um, if I had to take a guess, I would say West Side Story has the stronger narrative to get both women in. You know, mm. they, you, so they're sort of sharing the Anita, you know, role. Uh, so you could see people who love West Side Story could vote for them as kind of a package deal. Um, with Ariana being the stronger of, you know, having the Anita role this time, uh, uh, she would probably be the likelier to win in that case. Um, you know, you can never count out Judy Dench at the Oscars, but her role in Belfast is relatively small. Um, it, it, it doesn't carry the most emotional impact in the film. Uh, so, so I feel like Katrina will be the representative for Belfast. And if one of the films gets double, it'll probably be West Side Story. Mm. I agree with that. Dan, what are your thoughts on that possibility in that 0.5% chance world I've created? Yeah, I mean, Rita Moreno, I mean, she takes over over a role that was a man in the original and um, older gentleman. And so she's playing an older woman doing the same role. 
and DeBose is playing Rita Moreno's role. And obviously we, re- we now realize the most meaty role in the entire film because two times over, it's the most magnanimous of roles. I mean, just she just jumps off the screen every time she's on there. Ariana DeBose does. And so I, I, I would argue Ariana DeBose might even be the front runner to win this award coming from nowhere, out of nowhere. And I think you're going to get Rita Moreno at these award shows anyway, whether she's nominated or not. So I don't see her getting nominated. I think they're just going to want to celebrate West Side Story and the whole idea of West Side Story. Um, what is it? 60, is it the 60th anniversary of this film or something this year? I'm yes, not, actually. Uh, oh. 1961, It would be this would be the 60th anniversary. So they're going to want to oh. celebrate this film anyway. They're going to get her there at these award shows, whether she's nominated or not. So you're going to get Rita Moreno showing up at these things and she's going to be hugging people and kissing people. And well, well, well not with COVID, right? Maybe not kissing. <laughs> and hugging, that's, you know? Yeah. That's but the... you know what I mean? She's going to be there. And so you, you don't, you're not going to lose her from showing up at this, at this stuff by not nominating, nominating her. And you can give that nomination to somebody else, not saying that she doesn't deserve it, but like, like a, Marley Matlin could get in there or, or, or um, somebody like, um, uh, dang it. I'm sorry. I, my, uh, my thing here is, you know, like, um, uh, let me think like a Kate Blanchett for nightmare alley or, or, a, or a, somebody like that, or a Ruth Nega for passing or mm-hmm. something like that. Possibly not saying that it's going to happen, but I'm just saying. Uh, Ruth Nega is actually a really interesting uh, pull because the fact that she made it into loving over some more recognized actresses, she made it for best actress. Um, I, think, I believe it was actress, if I'm not mistaken, not supporting actress. Um, yes. She she made it in over some well established actresses, and the film wasn't even that well. Uh, um, did, was she the only? She wasn't the only one for. She was she was the only nomination for for that loving. film. It was wow. It was interesting because. That year, I think she got the Golden Globe nomination, and then she just kind of fell off in that. Like, she mm-hmm. wasn't – like, she didn't make any of the other lineups, and so it's all like, oh, okay, I guess loving isn't happening. And then the Oscar nominations happen, and Ruth Mega gets that nomination. Um, and it was it was such a – I always love that. Uh, yes. You know, especially, like, you know, she – you know, being the only nomination for that film, it was never likely she was going to win for that film. But it also made Ruth Mega – like it, it, it put her on the map in a way that I think, you know, has helped her career and, and, and led to things like passing uh, in a way that uh, like if they'd given it to, say, Annette Benning, who was amazing in 20th century women. Mm. But like, you know, she didn't need the career boot. Like Annette Benning is, you know, she's she's Annette good. <laughs> she's Annette Benning. No, but that is an excellent point, I will say, because she could be the same sole representation for passing this year. Sad to, sad to say. Potentially, Sadly, yeah. yeah. Sadly, that could be the case because I think there is a, a, a bevy of nominations that should, like cinematography, adapted screenplay, but she could be the sole representation again. I think again it does have I, a shot for screenplay. I, 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 I think am, that's its strongest other shot, and I still think there is a ghost of a chance for Tessa Thompson, uh, but yeah, the, 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 they and the film as a whole will need a lot yes. more, yeah. more uh, yeah, to show up a lot more places. Yes, Tessa's going to need that SAG and or critics um for it to transpire but no i i agree and or i think but i think ruth nega could be the one of the few to uh the even if her film misses out and everything else could be the one to eke out because i think loving was telling like hey they know who she is they like her and what she's done and i think that she's shown up i think she won another critic i think she won a critics prize for sporting actress today i don't know who it was new york online new online i think new york online critics are think what she just won uh dan do you see ruth nega inching it out for a second oscar nomination yeah i do actually i mean because you think you think about it, you just kind of you know do a little bit of math here you see kirsten dunst Anjanu ellis ariana debose ruth nega and maybe a marley matlin or something like that there's your five a belf probably maybe as well katrina belf yeah so you get six man mm. well which I think goes in the long line is the strong supporting. The supporting is very strong for both categories this year, which is really good because sometimes we're like we're really scraping the barrel when it comes to to um, certain areas, uh, certain years. Uh, but this year it's a bevy of riches. 
Uh, but you mentioned Marley Matlin. Marley Matlin, uh, Dan, uh, we mentioned prior that Troy Kotzer is getting the love, not as much so her. I'm not saying she's not good, but one of those is definitely getting more love, and that's Troy. Yeah, uh, you know Marley Matlin's role is relatively understated. Uh, she does she does get that one Oscar clip kind of scene with her daughter, uh, but I feel like you know Troy Kotzer gets a little bit more of the meteor scene steely stuff, both comic and 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 heartwarming and and moving. Um, and, and and Marley Matlin like that role is just it doesn't it just doesn't have that kind of showy kind of. Uh, uh, awards baity uh yeah. quality to it so i feel like but i feel like she her chances are bolstered but one by the fact that she is such a pioneering deaf actress in the industry um and that that clout helped coda even happen um and the fact that coda making the afi top 10 a potential best picture nomination for that film certainly you know she could certainly still be in that top five mm -hmm. dan yeah no the, i mean it's what almost thirty years since she won the what? Oh wow! What was it no forty almost thirty five thirty something years since she won the Academy Award? And doing right? that math in your head, brava! <laughs> Something like yeah, in the and neighborhood. She still holds the record as the youngest Best Actress winner of all time. Oh wow, she does! And so it would be crazy. All these years later, she gets nominated again for playing another deaf, a deaf character and in a movie of, that celebrates deaf people in general. And it's just such a heartwarming film about just music and not hearing, but being able to feel uh, it just Coda. I mean, you, we have, we've had this story before between Manning and I, because Manning got to see Coda at Sunday and I didn't pick Coda is one of the films I was going to see, Daniel. And I, and I, how long, how many months did I regret? <laughs> seeing a couple Coda months at least. A couple before months I at finally least. got to see it in August. I was like, damn it, Manning. And then, but you were, you were kind of complaining about the same thing. Cause you had a problem with, uh, I missed passing passing, but you also yep. had the problem with, uh, Judas and the black Messiah. That yeah. <laughs> you were yeah. cursing me out because of that, you know? Well, so. See, I bought the ticket and didn't realize I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch it because I thought it was 24 hours. But when you start play, you have a certain amount of time to watch it. And I was like, I'm, I'll watch it. I'll start. I'll finish it later. My bad, everybody. My bad. Because um, it expired by that time. But yeah, um, I, from now on, this coming year in the virtual Sundance, I'm going to buy whatever the opening opening film is. I don't care what it is. I'm buying it because I, I'm not going to miss the one of the best pictures of the year and have to wait seven months to see it. That's fair. And I have, a, there's a couple more. And one of the ones I want to talk about real fast, as we had mentioned prior and, um, uh, uh, um, uh, actually, hold on. No, Daniel, did I ask your opinion about Marley Matlin? Yes. Okay. See, my brain's already like, my brain's like over here looking at my notes and I'm like, wait, okay, who did, what I do? Um, but mass, we had mentioned it prior, Daniel, you had mentioned, sadly, mass was not getting to love it. It should rightfully so. And you said you would nominate all of them if possible. Uh, that for Martha Plimpton and Anne Dowd. And I think Martha Plimpton is sadly getting cast by the wayside because we can only have apparently so many actors from Mass. And I think Anne Dowd is currently getting the love right now. She's like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like three or four in Gold Derby's odds at the moment. Uh, she's currently five. Ariana DeBose mm. you know, has really she jumped up. Jumps, yeah. Yeah. So do you think Anne Dowd has a, has a shot? at all for mass i think yeah i think she still has a chance it's it's certainly not uh she's certainly not a lock for that nomination but no. you know she is she is another act and she, her narrative is so like impressive as well uh and you know obviously narrative always matters even though it's supposed to be about the performances but just the fact that she uh financed her own campaign for compliance didn't get that nomination but it put her on the map uh, in such a way that it just opened up doors with The Leftovers and uh, The Handmaid's Tale, which she won an Emmy for. Um, and, and just the last decade of her career has been so exciting um, for it to like culminate in her actually getting that Oscar nomination uh, would be such a great full circle moment. Um, and so I think it's still possible. Um, 
but yeah, that that movie is going to need a little bit more help, um, especially with so with with such a crowd of other films uh, and other supporting actresses in films that are likely Best Picture nominees. Uh, you know, that are going to have a higher profile overall, which is which is her biggest uh, challenge, mm-hmm. uh, as I mentioned in the supporting actor race for Richard Jenkins for the same reason for the humans. Um, so yeah, but I think yeah, I think it's I think it's still possible for her. I, I hope because she's going to need, again, she is absolutely going to need um, her star to rise. Yeah, she's going to need some help from the critics, from the gills in order to get that at the end of the day. Because I don't critics think she's going to. Critics' choice gonna... will be a big one. Yeah, it's critics' choice will be a really big choice, thing. That's going to be a big one. And then, not that we give a crap about the Golden Globes, but if she gets both of those, start looking looking out for Ann Dowd, you know? And. Well, now I ask the question, are the Golden Globes going to really mean something this year still? Because I know they've lost that because they, they've lost their platform of just televised being televised. So is that going to help this year at all, you think? So or is this going to be like on paper person to ask answer this question? If anybody well, yeah, I will, then I'll, well, Daniel, <laughs> I honestly I honestly don't think the Golden Globes are going to matter. Um, I think, you know, it's. I like the 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 just the studios and the talent uh even if they're nominated at the golden globes i i'm not sure anybody's going to be rushing to be associated yeah. with them this year so um no one's going to be really promoting oh we're nominated for x number of golden globes um so yeah i think i think the golden globes should have taken a year off and you know regrouped and see if, if that mattered regroup and you know, and uh, but going forward this year, I, I don't think they're going to be really much of a factor one way or the other. That's He's point. right. I mean, tomorrow, tomorrow on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you're going to see the, the posters of the movies. Belfast now nominated for 10 Critics' Choice Awards. And if it doesn't say any Golden Globes, you'll know why. If it yeah. ain't nominated for three Golden Globes or whatever. Because that's what's going to happen on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You're going to see the poster. You're going to see the movie. Such and such nominated for a critic's choice. And you won't see anything for Golden Globe. Then you're like, okay. So nobody, everybody's distancing themselves from the Globe. So it doesn't, the, the, the nominations don't matter this year to, to people. That's what will happen. Or we'll find out tomorrow when, if we do get the posters and the things, such and such nominated for a Golden Globe. You're like, okay, I guess it still matters. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm betting. I'm betting good money that yeah, we're probably not. There might be some films that do that if they only get something from the Golden Globes. Like if they get nothing from critics and they want something to put on, maybe. But no, I don't think. I don't. They do definitely do not have the staying power that they once did. Um, and I've then there's a couple. It. I've been seeing ahead, Manning, real quick. Anything that Belfast has won or nom- a poster uh, pops up. I mean, it's just like I follow Belfast on on social media, so I'm seeing every little thing. Of course, you know, so that's what will happen. And finally, no, well, not finally, because there's two more who are uh, both have two Oscars right now, and they're supporting performances that I feel like we need to watch out for. One because, well, she's Meryl Streep and don't look up and then also because it's kate blanchett who i feel like is also she's not streep in the sense she could do anything get nominated for but she's someone we still got to look out for especially because from nightmare alley she got very critical praise late breaking performances to be sure but do we see that those two kind of like the late breakers happening at all daniel um i don't currently see either of them happening um you know meryl streep is the kind of actor who can you or usually get in for pretty much anything she does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, I think last year, if into the woods, but I think last year, I think she was better in the prom than she was in into the woods. Um, and the fact that she couldn't get in hmm. for the prom, I felt like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not that the, the, you know, the, the shine is worn off or anything like that. She's still Meryl freaking street. Uh, I think probably Kate Blanchett is the likelier of the two this year, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, I'm not currently predicting either of them. Mm-hmm. And Dan, what about for you? Yeah, I mean, if I if I had to say, I mean, I, she's funny and and they're all funny in Don't Look Up. That the movie is is a funny movie. 
But I think if you're going to get her into anything, the, the femme fatale type of character that she plays in Nightmare Alley would be the role because she, she really, oh God, I don't want to get into it. But she's great. I really love her in um, Nightmare Alley. And she's funny. Uh, Kate Blanchett is as a drunken newscaster and um, don't look up. <laughs> I can't wait just to see that scene. Just from that scene itself with her and Tyler Perry looks interesting to say the least. A couple multiple scenes. Yeah. Okay. No taken. Um, is there anyone else that we haven't mentioned that you guys want to highlight uh, that you feel like has a really solid chance? Uh, either one of you guys can jump in with someone that you feel like is uh, worthy of a mention. Um, I would say Jesse Buckley, maybe like we could see, like she's, she's sort of been bubbling under for a while. Like she, she's been mm -hmm. on the cusp of, uh, you know, she, she's going to be an Oscar nominee, I would say in the next three or four years for, for something. Yeah. Um, and depending on how Lost Daughter does, um, you know, I, I could see her bubbling up, uh, to the top there. Uh, it's hard for me to, to, I, I think we've covered most everyone who has like yeah. a real, strong chance i i i, I wish olga Meredith were getting more attention for in the heights mm. but sadly <laughs> yeah that was a solid even for someone from, like myself i was not as high on in the heights as a lot of people she was fantastic her song is something i still i still take my biggest takeaway from the movie was just that entire scene and her song her performance good choice daniel good choice um yeah oh what Go ahead. Oh, as one I have is um that she won um the New York uh, Critics Circle. Uh, Catherine Hunter for the tragedy of Macbeth. Yes. Uh, I feel like that's a, that's a very that's a very New York uh, film critics. I feel like it's a very critic thing to do, like to what? give something along those lines. I don't see that translating to an Oscar nom. Were you the uh, one that told me that she played three different characters in that? She played. Uh, she plays all three witches. Yeah. So maybe Please that's the reason. And she's got makeup and all that kind of stuff. Yes, no? she does. They yeah. do like makeup at the Oscars. So maybe that's what, like, well, look at this one's doing three roles. She looks different. She's got all True. the makeup going on. Maybe that's that's the thing that jumps out to people. In New York, they're 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 not to say that that they're like like the the, the whole entire public of the United States, but they have a a good eye for things. The New York fitter. So they have a good eye for things. They, they don't just let things get by them too often. So maybe that's something that nobody knows about, but they know because it played at uh, what is it, New York? Uh, what, uh, which one of them? They played York? at New York Film Festival. Yeah, New York. So maybe that's how they know that. So we don't know it because we haven't sure. seen the film yet. You know, who knows? No, you're right. Um, I'm really throw that out there because when that was a really cool mention that they did, because I don't think we're going to see her name pop up a lot, but Hey, you know what? Strange things have happened. I think, uh, Daniel, I, I guess, I think we mentioned this when we were talking about AFI, but tragedy Macbeth got a resurgence. Tragedy Macbeth's going to need a lot more hype in order to bring in probably like a Catherine Hunter, because right now I think act for, for actors, like I think it's Denzel. I don't see McDormand happening. Uh, she hasn't really gotten any mentions. I mean, she's Francis, though, so. Um, do you see anything? Do you, do you see Catherine Hunter happening at all, Daniel? Um, I, I, th I think that's going to be a wait and see. We'll see if, if she shows up in more places and, in, in, you know, cr more critics groups mm -hmm. uh, and critics choice nominations. Uh, it, it, it's possible. Like, there's so many things that are still possible, you know, before You're we right. get so many more nominations. Uh, but right now, it doesn't seem as likely uh, as, you know, in such a crowded category that has already so many established possibilities. I agree 100%. Um, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through the two, I guess, biggest question marks when it comes to what in the world is going on with these two categories. And we may know tomorrow when, well, uh, by the time you listen to this, it's a Tuesday. So yesterday, you'll know exactly what critics and I guess Golden Globes as well, too, have happened and where kind of things are starting to shift. The waves and the tides are turning. Um, and one thing before we head out and we start to wrap things up for this, I want to go around and say, what is one performance you guys think that people should really pay attention to? They can be supporting, they can be lead. What is something you encourage people to go out and check this year as we start to wrap up the uh, 2021 and get into 2022? Um, uh, 
Dan, what is one performance that you feel like people really should pay attention to more than they already have? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with names, especially Japanese names, but the lead, oh. the two main, the chauffeur and the chauffeur E um, in Drive My Car are both incredible. I mean, incredible. I, 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 I would be blown away. If either one of these two people got into an acting category, because uh, they're both incredible. And the guy from the main guy from uh, a hero, another name that these mm. names are hard for me. I don't have them just at the tip of my tongue over here, but, uh, or on my phone right here. So if any of these type of, or the girl from worst person in the world, the leading, Oh God, she's incredible. Incredible. I've been shepherding these foreign films. I know. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but these performances are amazing. Amazing performances. Oh, for certain. And Daniel, what about for you? What is one performance you want people to kind of take away from this year that may have got not gotten the same love that maybe it should get? Um, well, I, I have talked about a couple of those in these supporting categories with, um, you know, like Olga Merides, especially, uh, and the mass actors. Uh, one, you know, since we didn't talk about lead actress uh, uh, today, uh, I'd like to give a, a shout out to Tessa Thompson um, in passing. I want people to watch that movie. I want people to appreciate how much she is doing in not only what the character is saying, but, you know, just what is unspoken in that film um, and how just the ambiguity of that character plays out to the very end in a way that that really makes that, you know, ending, which I'm not going to give away, but, you know, really makes the ending of the film work in a way that the power of the dog ending really brings that whole movie together in a, a really potent way. Um, and so much of that is Tessa Thompson's performance. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, she's not getting, uh, uh, she hasn't gotten as much buzz as I think she should be getting. Uh, again, things are still possible, you know, especially if Critics' Choice does what they have done sometimes and nominates six, seven, eight people in a category, depending on how <laughs> many uh, Oscar nominees they want to make sure they get in there. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I, I really, you know, everyone listening to this, uh, please, please watch Passing uh, and please appreciate both Ruth Nega and uh, Tessa Thompson's performances. Daniel, you took mine. How could you, sir? <laughs> How could you? I, want, I was like, well, hey, that's good. That's good. That means that, that means that we, that means that there are people out there who will encourage someone else to go out and check on that film um, because it is something that is truly beautiful and should be worth seeing um, for, you know, it, because, it's not getting enough love. It's not getting the love it really deserves. Um, and Tessa Thompson is a big, is a big part of that. Tessa Thompson, she's a big, big part of that. Um, but I guess the one that I wanted to uh, mention now, I guess it's my backup. But uh, one of the performances that I really want to like, I guess highlight, it's uh, um, uh, uh, specifically it's Jason Isaacs in Mass. Um, he has he has been kind of falling by the wayside recently, and I want people to look at what he did not saying any of them are any lesser than i think they're all on a really equal playing field doing very different things but jason isaacs i feel like is an actor who has been as a character actor i think supporting performances you get a lot of character actors and also a leading man in some aspects too in his earlier career but he is a performer that i feel like is doing such fantastic work and it would be a shame that he gives probably the performance of his career um what i think um arguably so but this would be a great representation for what i think is a really great 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 powerful film uh the word powerful has been thrown around for mass a lot to the point to exhaustion but it's it's applicable it is very applicable for that film and i just kind of hope people go out a chance to see mass i'm going to encourage you all to always go see mass uh whenever you get the chance it's not out yet streaming um it's, everybody's going to mass today Manny. everyone's Sunday. going to mass oh. <laughs> I just <laughs> keep using this old I walked joke. Right into that one, didn't I? I walked right into that. All right, but <laughs> no, agreed. Like I, I think Matt Jason Isaacs is someone that people really should look at uh, and specific and specifically, if not everyone from Mass in general. 
um, since Daniel took my Tessa Thompson pick. But you know what? I'm glad some. I'm glad someone mentioned it. I'm glad someone else sees the greatness in that performance as much as I do. And honestly, I will also co-sign Jason Isaacs in Mass, as you know, as I've talked about. I love the He's film. Great. I think all four actors deserve to be nominated. And um, and yeah, it they are it are it is such a package deal with them. Like I feel like no one of their performances is possible without what the other three are doing. Um, yes, it's, it's just so such a perfect collaboration that it's even hard to pick like who's like the strongest in it. It's like well, no, it's like. What's the what's the strongest spoke in a wheel? It's like it's not, you know. It, it, it's yes. they're all the reason it's turning. So uh, yeah, not going off on a real. We're not going to go off on this. But what do you think a SAG nomination for the cast of Mass? Yeah, any chance at all? Oh, I think that's a, I think that's a possibility. I think one yeah. thing that the SAG awards respond to in ensemble categories is ensembles that feel like ensembles. You know, so I think I think that's one of the reasons like Game of Thrones never won for TV uh, is because it has a gigantic mm. cast, but it felt like they were making like they were so spread out that they were like in like seven different shows <laughs> at a time. Ooh, yeah. uh, whereas whereas like shows and movies where you have actors, you know, the actual ca- actors like interacting with each other in in like really, you know, concrete ways. Your Little Miss Sunshine, A Family in a Car, Orange is the New Black, so many group scenes in the prison, Downton Abbey, so many like upstairs, downstairs dinner scenes and character interaction. Mm. So like something like Mass, where you have where it the the ensemble nature of it is so front and center. Uh, I think I think ensemble at SAG is that movie's best chance of thrusting back to the forefront of the awards race. Uh, so not not certainly not a guarantee, but I think it would be a perfect place to nominate it. There you I, go. I agree. That would be fantastic. I'm trepidatious on putting it in my predictions, but man, that'd be so awesome. That'd be sweet. Deserving as well. Um, but yeah, no, that wraps us up, ladies and gentlemen. We've gone extra long. Who knows? I might cut this into two part episode because this was just such great content. I couldn't cut anything else out of this because uh daniel you've been an excellent special guest today on gone with the wind uh so can you uh, tell the people where can they find you daniel ah uh, yes you can find me uh on goldderby.com where uh i am i am writing another seven thousand articles um <laughs> 14, i i do have a tw- yeah i do have a twitter and an instagram i'm not as active as i have been in the past but my uh twitter is at dan something dan underscore something which i created before uh like it, it was it was one of those accounts where you like you can't think of something so you just like dan something and that just ended up being what stuck and i ended up getting verified so now that's just who i'm gonna be on <laughs> and i'm also uh at dan something no underscore just dan something on instagram so <laughs> that's that's the long story behind my socials I was about to say, take that verification. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> yeah. I give anything for it, but I'm way off. One day, Dan. Hey, one day. You're now in, you're now in an official critics group, Dan. So keep that. All right. So Dan Skip Allen, whose middle name is not Skip. Where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at disappointmentmedia.com where I write all kinds of articles. You know, the latest movie reviews, TV shows, retrospective anniversaries you name it or my own blog from the fourth row dot wordpress.com or my name dan skip allen on facebook instagram twitter pinterest yep pinterest yep yes he does have pinterest ladies and gentlemen i do not but you can find youtube shows and i got oh, a couple you do? YouTube yes go ahead. that are on hiatus right now so they'll be back in the spring Sorry. And no, you're fine. <clears throat> and of course, you can find me at Twitter at Cine underscore man. That's C I N E underscore M A N N, as well as right here hosting Gone with the Wind, where you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, wherever you can find podcasts, you can find us right there, as well as here on YouTube if you're listening to it here. Um, you can find us on Take Three Productions, where they house our podcast, Gone with the Wind, as well as you can find me every week, every other week, uh, doing and writing a review for WFMY News 2 in Greensboro, North Carolina. This week, look for my thoughts on West Side Story. 
story. I have wrote something so long, I have to condense it down because it cannot be past three minutes my review on air. So look forward to that. Lots to say, be it on air or on our YouTube page or our website. And I'd like to thank again, Daniel, for joining us on this illustrious day for going two and a half hours. Uh, it's been an excellent discussion and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you for joining us on Gone with the Wind. Cue the music.